This video is everything you need to outline and evaluate the Hovland Yale model. It includes um, questions so that you can practice your application of it. And there's also a memory story for easy recall. In the exam, they might ask you to make an advert to persuade people to buy something, which is consumer behaviour, or they might ask you to design an advert or apply the model to change public attitudes. So that's more about health promotion. Both of these are about the science of persuasion. Both of them are adverts that are trying to get you to use the Hovland Jail model to change people's attitudes and behaviour. The Hovland Jail model is really easy. Um, basically, it's saying who says what to whom. So who is the source or the communicator? What is the persuasive message? So what's in the advert and how should the message be put across? And who is the, um, who is the audience? So who do they actually want to persuade? So they're going to consider whether the audience is old or young or intelligent, not so intelligent or moderately intelligent. So the source, um, this is the person or the publication that is trying to persuade you. So Petty and Cassiopo identified that the attractiveness of the communicator was really important in persuasion. So the more attractive the person is or the publication is, the more persuasive it will be. So an application, therefore, of Hovland Dale is to use attractive, probably celebrity personalities to persuade others. And you can see Nicole Scherzinger here advertising Muller yogurts and uh, George Clooney, who's advertising coffee. And both of those people are considered extraordinarily attractive in the eyes of most people in society. And so that's why those products have decided to use those people as the source. The second part of the model is the message. And Hovland Yale identified that to have moderate fear in an advert, in a message, is really good for persuasion, but not too much. So if you look um, at this picture, you can see that says AIDS, and that still is taken from an advert from the 1980s. I've put a link to that advert in the description of this video. It's only I don't know, it's not even a minute long. When that advert came out in the 1980s, it was so frightening that everybody just um, freaked out about it. It was confusing. It was like gravestones slamming down and said, don't die of ignorance. And people were, were really confused and really frightened by it. And Hovland Jail says that that too much fear just turns people off. They literally just switch off. Don't take the message on board. However, moderate fear is very good for persuasion. So if you look at this advert here for a cleaning product, um, again, I'll put the, the link for the actual advert in the description. This is advertising a, a steam cleaner and they've used moderate fear. They've used a nursery setting little children and showing little children putting things in their mouths. And they're saying, oh, this is really good. Oh, the children are always putting things in their mouths and now we can make sure everything's clean. And the implication is, is that if you don't do that, the children will get sick. They don't actually say that, and you don't, obviously don't see like children who are ill, but that's the implications. So they're using moderate fear. So if it comes up in the exam um, of, to say an application of the Hovland Jail, make sure you design an advert or a public health campaign that has moderate fear in it, but not too much, and explain the reasons why. So the third part of the Hovland Jail model is about the audience. And so uh, Loftus 2003 found that younger people are more susceptible to persuasive messages than adults or the elderly. Um, and Martin 1997 found that children also appear to be more susceptible to the persuasive power of advertising. So if you're advertising things to children, then it's easy peasy. Um, but if you are trying to persuade adults or the elderly, then you might have to be more creative um, and in your advertising and try and make that persuasion even more so. So the second part about the audience is about intelligence. So um, Hovland and his team found that low and high intelligence audiences are less easily persuaded than those with moderate intelligence. So if you consider people with very low intelligence, they just might not understand the message in the 
in the advert at all anyway, so it just goes over their head. And people with high intelligence will be able to analyse it and to have their own opinion based on facts and information. So moderately intelligent people are more uh, open to persuasion. Um, with intelligent audiences, if you're trying to persuade them, then presenting both sides of an argument is more effective. So the other night I was watching something about the EU debate, which is coming up on the 23rd of June 2016, and I heard somebody say, um, we can survive without the EU, but we'd thrive in the EU. And so that's an example of putting both sides of the argument across. You're saying, yeah, of course we can survive without it, you know, we're not stupid. But um, this particular side of the argument was saying we will thrive within it. And so that's just an example of both sides of the argument. So a little memory peg for this is if you see the Hovland jail model come up in the exam, I want you to immediately think about a great big jelly and Nicole Scherzinger getting the jelly out of the fridge and it's wobbling slightly. So she puts the jelly on the side and pours over chocolate sauce over the jelly, which makes it look even more attractive. So that's to represent that the first part of the model is saying who is the source. And because Nicole Scherzinger is taking it out, remember that she is someone who's considered extraordinarily attractive. So the source must be attractive in order to communicate the message. The next thing you're going to imagine is that Nicole picks up the jelly and it's wobbling slightly and she's carrying it through into the other room. So you think, well, why is the jelly wobbling slightly? And I want you to think about that, really think about that jelly just wobbling slightly now, just shaking a bit. And the idea is that when um, the shaking of it is to say that we are moderately scared. If it was shaking all over the place, then that would represent that we're really scared. Because it's shaking just a little bit, it's a little bit scared, there's moderate fear. So that's to represent that the Hovland Jail says that the message is persuasive if it has moderate amount of fear. Then I want you to imagine she takes it into the next room, it's for a kid's birthday party, and all the children are like, oh wow, look at that massive jelly with all the chocolate sauce on, and they all tuck into it. But the adults say, oh no thanks, I don't want any. So that's to remind you that children are more easily persuaded by uh, messages than adults or the elderly. So they tuck into the jelly because they're persuaded that it's delicious, whereas the adults have got previous experience and think, mm, I'll give it a miss, thanks. So the other bit to this, I want you to imagine that in the corner of the room that Jeremy Kyle is on the, on the telly. Uh, no offence to the Jeremy Kyle show, but often the people, the, the guests on the show, tend to be of lower intelligence. Um, not always, but often they are. So I want you to imagine that the people on the show are eating the jelly as well, to represent that people, oh, so they're not eating the jelly. And that's to represent that people with low intelligence are not persuaded by messages. They're all like just throwing the jelly at each other, having a jelly fight, but not eating it. So they're not persuaded to eat it. They've lost the whole point of the message. And then imagine that um, a professor comes into the room and he also doesn't want jelly. And that's to represent that more intelligent people are not easily persuaded unless you give them both sides of the argument. So if you provided a great big birthday cake and a jelly, then they would feel um, happy to select the one that they wanted because they've got both sides of the argument. So before we evaluate the Hovland Jail, I want you to try it out for yourself so you can actually practice it. So you can create and record, if you fancy, your own advert and you want to persuade young people to buy sports related equipment for eight marks. So just take a screenshot of this um, so you can read all the questions Follow that I, you know, follow all those questions in order to get the maximum eight marks. To consider those. If you would like an answer sheet to check your work, then you can tweet me at blonde underscore pretzel, and I'll uh, put a link to my Twitter in the um, description. So we're going to look at some evaluation points and you won't need all of them. Remember the media questions are always split questions, but it's good to know a few because you just don't know which ones you're going to have to apply. So the first evaluation point is that O'Mahony and Meenigan, 1997, said that celebrity endorsements are not convincing or believable. So, you know, I personally, I'm not sure that Nicole Scherzinger has ever had a Muller yogurt um, unless she's been on an advert. I don't find her very convincing. And so they are questioning, O'Mahony and Meenigan are questioning that 
um, is the attractiveness of the model so important? So Hovland Jail says that we do need attractive people, but Own Mahoney and Meenigan said that those celebrity endorsements are often not convincing. Again, in this point, we're looking at whether the attractiveness of the model is so important. And Hume, 1992, concluded that celebrity endorsement does not significantly increase the persuasive communication of the advert and that celebrity can overshadow the product, which is what happened with ITV digital TV adverts. So they use Johnny Vegas and Monkey. Um, ITV Digital went bust and or just disappeared, not quite sure, but Monkey and Johnny Vegas are still going strong. So just remember that Hume says that celebrity overshadows the message content and therefore that's not going to persuade you to buy the product, it's just going to persuade you to spend more time looking at your favourite celebrity. The next evaluation point is for um, the message, the fact that moderate fear does work in persuasion. So fear appeals do work. So as long as they don't petrify the audience, then fear can be a useful tool in persuasiveness. And it was found that 78% of 13 to 24 year olds felt that the ICE campaign um, actually changed how they felt about drugs. So ICE is a drug, I think it's probably a bit like methamphetamine or something like that um, and it's in Australia and they, they call it ice that's their slang term um, have a look in the description for adverts that you can click on and actually see them they are moderately scary they're showing people whose lives are being ruined by that particular drug but they're not terrifying you don't see anybody like dead or anything like that so the fear appeals do work and this is evidence for that this evaluation point is about this gender bias in, persuas in persuasion research. I'm not going to read all that out to you. I recommend you just pause the video and take a screenshot and read it through for yourself. Um, there are methodological issues with the Hovland Jail model. Hovland himself pointed out that the model lacks population validity because most of the people they did the research on were students and sometimes army personnel. So obviously this group's age, wealth and education profile is untypical of the general population. And also um, it lacks mundane realism. So you know that mundane realism means that the task is not true to life. And that's because when they were researching the Hovland Jail model, they got the students and army personnel in a laboratory in a dark room watching adverts, which is not realistic. In real life, if you're watching adverts and they come on the TV or flash up on the internet, then you can just walk off. You can do something else. You can ignore them. You don't have to pay attention. Whereas they were looking at people who were captive audience. And so actually the results might be different if you looked at, um, if you looked at them in real life and looked at people's, um, whether they were persuaded or not, in their own homes. This is research evidence for the importance of the source. Now we spoke before about how it was the attractiveness of the actual person in it, like Nicole Scherzinger. However, it can also be how legitimate or credible that the source is. So for example, um, Hovland Weiss gave participants information about drug taking and participants were led to believe the source was either a prestigious medical journal or a newspaper. And the amount of attitude changed produced by the communications was more than twice as great when the source was thought to be the medical journal. So if you thought that you were reading something from a newspaper, then especially if it was something like the Daily Mail that is very sensationalist, then you might um, be less inclined to be persuaded by it. But if you think it's from a very credible medical journal, then you'd be more likely to be persuaded. So the source is not only attractive due to aesthetic reasons, the source has to be attractive according to its credibility, how much you think that it's um, a credible source of information. So the last two evaluation points are, the first one is about ethical issues. So if the Hovland Jail model can be used for good, like changing people's attitudes towards healthy behaviours, it can also be used negatively to persuade people to behave um, to behave negatively 
or to persuade them to do things that are unhealthy. So there's loads and loads of adverts for gambling sites at the moment, and probably that will just continue. Um, and gambling can become a, um, an addictive behaviour and cause people who are already in financial difficulties to become in even more financial difficulties or even poverty. Um, and so the Hovland Jail model, we might use it for good, but then other people might use it for, for ill. Um, and the other thing is that the Hovland Jail model focuses on external factors. So it's ignoring underlying internal processes such as attention, comprehension, and there's something called the elaboration likelihood model, um, which considers people's internal cognitive processes in how much they are persuaded. So how much someone is likely to elaborate on a message in their own mind will actually help with their persuasion or not. So the elaboration likelihood model, I've done a, another video for that, which is on my channel. Um, I have to admit, it's not the most fun video I've ever made. And, and this one's not exactly all singing or dancing, but it's really important for the exam. And because your exam's in two days, I just thought I'd get this done. So I recommend you watch it, but maybe have a cup of tea while you're doing it. Keep you awake. So that is the evaluation of the Hovland Jail model. Next up is an exam question, which I highly recommend that you do. So this is an exam question. It was something like this. It said something like, the government want to reduce their um, want people to reduce their speed in built-up areas to 30 miles an hour or lower. With reference to psychological research, discuss insights from the Hovland Yale model that might help them to achieve this aim, 10 marks. Now this is all AO2, AO3 because it's application of knowledge. You need to weave the elements of the Hovland Yale answer into your uh, the Hovland Yale model into your answers. So you would need to consider, you would say, you know, I'd need to consider the source, I would choose, and then you'd pick someone who's attractive and credible to be in the advert, someone that um, people in society respect and is an attractive person, and then say, because um, Petty and Cassiopo identified that uh, the more attractive the model, the source of information, the more persuasive that would be. So you can see you're weaving in the, the actual model into your answer. When it came to the message, you would say, um, you need to kind of say what you would put in the advert and why, and that the, the message would have moderate fear. So you're not going to have dead bodies all over the road because that would be just too frightening and people would switch off completely from the message. But you would need to think carefully about how to incorporate moderate fear into that particular advert. Um, you know that people who are driving are 17 and over, so you can miss out the part about children being persuaded for the actual message. Instead, you need to concentrate on that information about low or high intelligent people. And, uh, and for intelligent people, that you would have to put across both sides of the argument. So it might be something like, yes, the, um, the speed limit is 40, but really, if you do 30, you're going to, I don't know, save petrol and you'll probably get home around the same time anyway because of traffic lights and things like that. So you're trying to put across information in a way that is not insulting their intelligence. You're trying to show them both sides of the argument. So if you would like I, uh, an answer sheet to check your work, then you can tweet me at blonde underscore pretzel and request one. But I really recommend that you um, spend some, some time thinking about how to answer this question and actually answering it in the time limit. So if it's 10 marks, that's probably about 15 minutes maximum that you're allowed to spend on that, maybe slightly less. Um, and the more that you use your brain now and think of the answers, the easier it's going to be in the exam for you. Um, but if you would like to check your answers, then of course you can request an answer sheet. So good luck in your exam on Tuesday. Um, for the June 2016 exams and anyone who's doing resets, good luck for you too.